Welcome to the Extra Mile Podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the Extra Mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now, your host, Jackson Mummy, owner of the Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 286 of the Extra Mile Podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. Really glad to be with you. This is our second episode in 2020. It is extraordinarily amazing to me that we are already in 2020 and we are getting closer and closer, of course, to the February exam. And I know many of you are getting ready for that test. We've got lots of you uh, already beginning your studies for July 2020. That's great. And we're glad to have all of you with us. These podcast episodes are recorded in a couple of different ways. We've got them on audio or in video format. If you prefer the video format, you can go to celebrationbarreview.com slash 286, that's the episode number, and you can watch the episode there. If you prefer to listen to your podcasts, we are syndicated on Apple Podcasts, iTunes Radio, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, Radio.com, Spotify, a bunch of other places, and you can check that out there. Subscribe and you won't miss any episodes. And of course, we have all of our uh, episodes going back for over four and a half years now uh, to uh, right there on our website at celebrationbarreview.com. Just click on the link for um, uh, podcasts and blogs and you will see uh, the link there and you can search for just about anything you want. So we're glad to have you with us. If this is your first time on the podcast, welcome. Every week we come to you about the same time to talk about all things bar exam related. Now, today's episode is going to be a little different in that I decided uh, I get a lot of questions about photo reading and mind mapping. Those are two techniques that we use pretty extensively here on our course. And I do get a lot of questions, not just from our students, but from other people who've watched our videos or checked out our website, and they want to know about these tools and how they might use them. And we do offer a course called Photo Reading for the Bar Exam. And so in today's episode, I thought I'd just take some of the questions we've gotten from people recently and just give you some answers. So we're going to do some Q&A about photo reading and mind mapping. If you're not familiar with these techniques, I encourage you to stick around. I'll explain a little bit more about them, obviously, and why we think they're so powerful and important to use uh, when you're studying to pass your bar exam. Now, another tool that we think is really helpful when it comes to preparing for the bar exam is a free training webinar that we offer. It's called Do Something Different. Make the next bar exam your last bar exam. This is an on-demand training webinar. It's 90 minutes in length, and it's designed to take you step by step through the four stages that successful bar students follow. You'll hear from students in their own words about what they did and why it worked and why it was necessary to do something different. This training has been life-changing for thousands of people and it's available to you completely free. You do need to register and to do that, you can do it in one of three ways. You can go to the show notes button here on the video or on the audio, or you can go to celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar for more details. Now, we've set this up as an on-demand webinar uh, just because we know lots of people want to watch and listen, uh, but everybody's schedule is different. So all you have to do is click on register your seat, and then you can watch at the date and time that works best for you. Uh, shoot your questions to me from the webinar itself, and we'll be glad to answer those for you. I really encourage you to check out this training. Uh, it is a life-changing opportunity to look at why doing something different can make a difference for you. And if you're in particular a repeat bar taker, you absolutely should watch this because so often what I find is that repeat bar takers get caught in the rut of doing the same thing over and over again without success. This is going to show you what you have to do differently. And so I encourage you to check it out. Again, go to celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar. Now, before we jump into today's uh, episode, uh, you recall that last week I started something new for the year of 2020. I decided that we do some student shout outs, some uh, messages that we get from students that don't always make it into the, the normal uh, transactions that we talk about. Uh, we record a lot of videos with successful students. I think today as I'm recording, we're probably around 80 or so of those videos just done in the last year or two. Uh, but I also get a ton of email and messages from successful students, and those don't typically make their way into the, uh, the public stream. So I thought that this year, every week, I would highlight one student, uh, talk a little bit about their story, and share with you something that they wrote or said to us. Last week, we started with a student in California. I thought this week we'd jump over to Florida, come across the coast, and uh, we have a student by the name of Edwin, 
And uh, Edwin wrote the following to us. He said, I wanted to let you know that I passed the Florida bar using your course. This was my second jurisdiction. I passed the Maryland bar exam back in 2011. And the first time around, he said, I used Barbary. I didn't have a bad experience with them, but I didn't want to spend that much money this time around. Then he goes on to say, here's an honest comparison. I had a better experience with your course. It might be because I've been practicing for uh, seven plus years, but this time around, I actually understood the legal concepts tested. He said, Barbara used a scare tactic that didn't sit well with me. On the Maryland bar, the essays were graded on a zero to six scale, and you basically got a one if you responded. On the last practice test I did for them, I got a one on an essay, and I got a 96 raw out of 200 on the practice multi-state. So I went into that test seriously concerned. On the other hand, he said, I found your questions and course realistic. There were actually questions on the Florida multiple choice that seemed almost verbatim from your practice questions. And once I got through all your MBE questions, I knew I would be fine. As for comparative scores, I scored a 154 uh, on the MBE and a 149 on the Florida portion. Now for perspective, you need a 136 on both to pass. So Edwin passed by a wide margin. But then he goes on to say, the difference is that I was uh, working uh, now, the difference now is that I'm working full time and I have a two-year-old daughter. And any of you with two-year-olds know what that's like. He said, I'm sure given the same amount of time to study as the first time, I would have done even better. In short, he says, in concluding, I'm really happy I made the decision to use your course. If anyone ever asks, I'll be sure to recommend it. Well, thanks, Edwin. We really appreciate those comments. We appreciate your thoughts and congratulations on passing the Florida bar. You know, we work with a lot of people like Edwin who've taken a bar exam somewhere else and then several years later, they end up having to take the bar exam in another jurisdiction, whether it's Florida or the UBE, California, whatever it might be. You know, I think one of the realities is that studying when you're a professional with a family is very different than studying when you come right out of law school. And so having a course that's structured for that, uh, that helps you be more efficient in what you're doing and more effective is a really uh, important piece of the study picture. So if you'd like to know more about what Edwin did and others, uh, please feel free to, to check out our website or schedule a free conference with me. You'll see that link in the show notes as well. But again, just want to give a shout out to Edwin. Congratulations on his results. And we will be doing this all throughout 2020. We'll be profiling different students who've uh, been successful with Celebration Bar Review. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. I do want to jump into these questions that we had uh, from students and non-students alike about this wild and crazy thing called photo reading. Let's jump into it. So today I'm going to take some questions that I've received over the past few months about photo reading, both from our students and from people who are not in our course. And I thought we'd talk a little bit about what this uh, tool and technique is and how you can use it when you're studying for the bar exam. Very briefly, for those of you that are not familiar with photo reading, it is a uh, concept designed by Paul Sheely at Learning Strategies about 30 years ago in order to incorporate whole mind learning and to read more uh, quickly and with higher comprehension. The claim of photo reading is that you can read 25,000 words a minute with 75% comprehension. And we've seen that borne out with our students for many, many years. About 10 years ago, I started incorporating photo reading for some of my students who were having real difficulty on the bar exam. And with their early success, we began to realize that we had something truly unique here to offer in the bar review world. And so we continue to expand our offerings in photo reading, uh, including live what we call boot camps twice a year here in Florida uh, to teach photo reading, but to offer photo reading to all of our students uh, who wanted to add that on to their courses. Now, photo reading is a technique in which you are literally flipping pages and reading them into the non-conscious mind. It's not conscious uh, reading in the traditional sense, and it's not speed reading in the sense of moving your finger down the page rapidly. It's something entirely different, but extraordinarily effective in terms of recalling information and being able to use it for both the multi-state and the essay parts of the exam. In fact, we even use it on performance tests. And so as we began to develop more and more of the techniques, we actually, uh, in conjunction with learning strategies, created our own sort of uh, covering program called Photo Reading for the Bar Exam. In other words, we took Learning Strategies' basic photo reading program, which is not designed for the bar specifically, and we added pieces to it that applied to the bar exam itself. And in the process of doing that, uh, we have discovered enormous success for students, particularly those who had failed the exam previously. 
Today, we have more than 75% of our students who are photo readers as well, even though it is not automatically included in our courses. So you can see there's been a tremendous upswing in terms of interest and use. But of course, there are lots of questions and it's something quite different. And so I thought today what we'd do is talk about uh, some of the questions that people have and give you a better sense of photo reading just by trying to answer some of these questions. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the things that students have asked. One of the questions that I'm frequently asked is, how long does it take to learn the photo reading technique? And this is a great question. The answer is that it's really very simple. In the photo reading course that we use, which is uh, from Learning Strategies, their photo reading course takes eight one-hour audio lessons. That's it. So the way that we teach that is that you do an hour a day of photo reading lessons while you're studying for the bar. What that means is that you don't have to stop your bar study to do the photo reading, you do it uh, concurrently. And an hour a day is more than enough. Now, when we go to our live photo reading boot camp uh, for the bar exam, we actually teach the whole photo reading system in a little under three hours. So it doesn't take all that long to learn how to do it. And it's not as complicated as you might think. Can you get more sophisticated with it? Sure, but everything you need to know, you'll learn in those first few hours, and the eight hours is more than enough from that standpoint. All right, another question uh, came out in this form. I have a question about photo reading and about paraliminal recordings. Now, paraliminal recordings are another uh, product that we incorporate along with photo reading. These are recordings that play different soundtracks in the left and right hemisphere of the brain through your headphones or your earbuds. And they're designed to enhance your learning and to enhance what you do with photo reading. In any event, this uh, particular individual says, I took a few days to read a copy of a book I had from Paul Sheely from the early 1990s, probably one of his photo reading books. So what are the differences between his method and the photo reading for the bar exam version? Well, again, it's a great question. What we did working with Paul was to take his photo reading, which was designed for the general population, and to make it more specifically for the bar exam population. We did that by recognizing that it's not necessary to uh, encourage someone to do their reading for the bar exam. They have to do it. But at the same time, they're reading for a very specific purpose, which is to answer questions for the multi-state or the essay or to deal with the performance test. And so we modified the steps in photo reading just a bit to make them more focused on those particular skills. And instead of having to do a wide ranging preview uh, that would look at a book and say, am I interested in going forward? We didn't have to do that. We know you have to go forward. At the same time, we also knew that if we could get students to post view by finding the key words and phrases after they had photo read, which is literally a process of flipping the pages at high speed, that we were then going to be able to dive deeper into those materials uh, using what's called activation. And the activation that we uh, are going to use and do use is through the use of mind maps. Now, mind maps are one of the techniques that Paul uses in his photo reading course, but they are the primary method that we use in photo reading for the bar exam because they allow you to create the visual representation of the material and then to continue to enhance and develop that as you go through and you answer questions and you listen to lectures and you do uh, essays and so on. So mind mapping is a big part of our approach to photo reading for the bar exam and part of what we incorporate and add in. Now we use a mind mapping approach that can be done by hand or on a computer, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through some of these other questions. But that's a big part of what we think uh, the, uh, the, the photo reading approach should be about for the bar exam. Our activation also comes from our lectures and our practice questions. Now that's significant because if you're photo reading generally, uh, you have to activate the material yourself. You have to go back and figure out what you want to have, uh, what's important to you to know. In our case, we developed our course around the same principles as photo reading, neurolinguistic programming, and we recognized that when we uh, had someone photo read material, which typically takes about 15 minutes to read an entire subject matter outline, so something that might have taken you anywhere from four hours, maybe eight hours, 10 hours or more, you'll actually be able to photo read in 15 minutes. Then we activate that material through your lectures and through your question practice. That's built into the structure of our course. That's something you don't get if you're just doing general photo reading. And so it's a nice way to enhance the work that you're doing uh, with your photo reading and to make it even more 
productive. So those are some of the differences. One other basic difference, I think, is that we add a lot of ancillary materials, particularly around uh, photo reading and mind mapping. And then how you use photo reading specifically to write a bar essay, how you use photo reading for the multi-state or any multiple choice question, and how you use photo reading when it comes to uh, performance tests. So we have specific lectures and courses designed as part of our photo reading for the bar exam that are designed to help you in all of those areas. So a lot of different possibilities for you there uh, and things that you can uh, work on. All right, so, uh, and then of course we add paraliminals as well and we will link to all of those, both photo reading for the bar exam and paraliminals. We think the two go hand in hand because they're a useful uh, way to take the material that you're learning as a photo reader and then cement that in your brain through the use of paraliminal recording. So uh, some different things there. Okay, next question that we got, uh, we had a student who said, I'm about nine weeks away from my exam. Is it too late to purchase photo reading? I'm about two weeks into my studies. The answer is no, it's not too late. Remember I said that it takes only about eight hours of total study time to learn the photo reading system. We've had students begin their photo reading process as little as four weeks before the bar exam and be successful. So you've got plenty of time to add photo reading to a course uh, if you've not done so. I think if you're within that last four weeks, probably too close to be comfortable for you, although it just doesn't take that long to learn, uh, but definitely no problem there. In terms of how far into your studies can you be when you add it, doesn't really matter. At whatever point you add photo reading, it will enhance everything you do. It will speed you up, of course, uh, because 15 minutes to read is way different than four hours or six hours or eight hours or 10 hours, and so you're actually going to find it's a net time saver. All right. Another question I get a lot of is, do you recommend getting the photo reading for the bar exam course and the paraliminal pack uh, that you offer? And the answer is yes. What we did with the paraliminal pack was that working with Paul, we went through the list of paraliminal recordings, these 20 minute audio recordings, uh, and uh, Learning Strategies has, I think over 50 of these different recordings on all sorts of different titles and subjects. And each paraliminal recording is designed to deal with a specific block or problem like belief or anxiety or sleeping well or being overwhelmed or confidence, whatever it might be. And what we did is we looked at all of these different titles and we said, what would be the most appropriate for a bar taker to, to deal with? And we curated a collection of 16 different titles. We call that the bar prep paraliminal pack, which is easier to do than to say. And uh, we put that together for $295. It would normally cost you about $600 if you were buying each of those paraliminals on their own. And we think it goes really well with your bar studies and with your photo reading. Because as your photo reading, what you want to be able to do is to lock in that information in your non-conscious brain and then activate it. Bring it out into your conscious mind when you need it on the exam. The paraliminals are very effective at helping you do that. And so many of our students uh, who use photo reading also use the paraliminals. All right, uh, we also get obviously lots of questions about mind mapping programs, and there are a million of them out there, it seems like, uh, in the market. We recommend a program called MindMeister, M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R.com. It's a computer program. It's got a free version and a relatively inexpensive six or seven dollar a month subscription. We think it's a great tool. But we also have lots of people who mind map uh, drawing by hand and uh, love doing that. And that's a great way to do it as well. So different choices there and just whatever works best for you. All right. Um, staying in the, the track of talking about paraliminals and photo reading, uh, someone said, I've been listening to the paraliminals for over a year now and I really like them. Uh, I've done the memory supercharger, which is a paraliminal recording that's included in the photo reading for the bar exam course. And the idea here is that you photo read at night and then you listen to this 20 minute paraliminal and it's like a, a fixer. Uh, it, it sort of uh, sets the material in your brain a little bit better. It locks it in. Um, and the, uh, the student said that they love that. Um, and then they said, I've heard of something called a photo reading activator uh, audio. Well, this is something we add to the photo reading for the bar exam. It is a special uh, photo reading paraliminal uh, that was done and we add it in our course uh, for our students. We think it's really, really helpful. And what it does is it activates what you've just learned as a photo reader. And so this is a bonus of uh, the photo reading for the bar 
our exam course. So uh, if you like Memory Supercharger, definitely check out the Photo Reading Activator. Uh, it's in your online course if you're already a registered Celebration Bar Review student for photo reading. Okay, um, the kind of question that I tend to get often sounds something like this one. Uh, I've been in a lot of calls uh, that I've joined over the past few weeks, and it seems like everyone is photo reading, and they like it. Uh, as you would say, I'm having FOMO, and uh, you know maybe it's just because I'm getting closer to the bar exam, but I want to make sure that I'm doing everything necessary to pass this bar. Would photo reading help me? The answer is yes, it would. Now, can you pass the bar exam without photo reading? Well, of course you can. But photo reading to me is a tool that makes life so much easier. If you were trying to pound a, a, a nail or a, a, a screw into the wall and you're having a lot of trouble and your screwdriver didn't fit the, the head of the, the screw and it just wasn't going in very well, and I walked by with a drill that had the right size bit and I said, would you like to use this power drill? And you'd say, no, no, I really like struggling with this, uh, doing this on my own by hand. It's uh, killing my hand, uh, but you know, I'd rather do it that way. Okay, you can do that. But here's this tool that's enormously effective. And the reason it's so effective is that it takes advantage of the 90% of our brain that we don't use most of the time. You see, most of us, particularly in law, are left brain. We're using our executive function, the, uh, the front of the brain we would think of, the uh, neocortex, the left brain. But the right side of the brain, the uh, artistic, uh, nonverbal side, is the 90% that you hear people talk about all the time. What photo reading does is take the material that you're reading and it puts it into the non-conscious 90% where it then translates that material. And when you are uh, activating it through uh, trying to answer a question, suddenly the answer is there. It's just, it just pops out. And we have students all the time that talk about the fact that sometimes they even see the answer popping out at them. It's like a little flash of light, uh, like on the screen there. Uh, and sometimes they see it in a different color. Sometimes they hear it in their, their, their mind's eye, uh, almost as a voice. Um, and I know that sounds weird and creepy, but that's precisely what happens. And so uh, as you begin to use this tool more effectively, you begin to realize that you've got an awful lot of power there and so if you want to do everything that you can to pass the bar, photo reading is a tool that I think you shouldn't be without. Now, I think photo reading with paraliminals and mind mapping makes it even better. Photo reading with meditation, maybe even more so. But the point that I really want to make is that if you know there's a tool out there and you're not going to use it, uh, then recognize that, that you're making that choice. I think a lot of students think, oh no, that would be dangerous to do. No, it's not dangerous at all. It's something that enhances what you're doing. It makes your studies better and more effective. So I would encourage you, certainly if you're in our course, I would encourage you to, to add it. All right, well, along those, those lines, um, I get a lot of comments from students after they pass the bar exam and as they're studying, and uh, uh, they talk about their photo reading experience. But I got this one that I thought was interesting. This student wrote and said, I feel compelled to share my experience with you. Usually my skepticism gets the best of me. So when I was introduced to photo reading the paraliminals, I was like, quote, people are drinking some Kool-Aid here. I got that. Today, while doing the civil procedure essay, before I wrote down my answer, I photo read the essay. And I kid you not, my brain automatically went into diversity jurisdiction, domestic relations matter exception, and rule 20. And then I was shocked when I read the analysis and those were exactly the topics being tested. Whoa, okay. Well, that's the kind of thing I hear from students as they're studying all the time. Suddenly information is available to them. They don't know why they know it, it's just there. And that experience happens frequently. Um, it seems like magic, it seems crazy, uh, but that is what occurs. And when people ask me, how do you get people that have failed the bar exam for 20 years and then they pass, or they raise their scores by 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 points to pass, most Every time, it's because they're a photo reader. That's what changes the, the ball game. And so uh, this is the kind of experience that people have when they're studying. All right, um, as I said to you, we do a live, what we call a photo reading for the bar exam boot camp twice a year. Uh, we do one in November of each year, and we do one at the end of May, the beginning of June. And uh, we would encourage you to attend our boot camp. It's a great two and a half day training period, and we'll put a link uh, here for that as well. Um, but we had a student that said, I attended boot camp already, but I'm waiting till the next bar exam to take the test. Am I still okay in terms of pacing and studying? And the answer is yes. When you attend our boot camp, you also get 
access to all of our webinars and lectures and videos, and they are part of your ongoing uh, materials so that you can review them as often as you need to. But the, uh, the reality is that you can absolutely uh, build on what you've done at boot camp. Now, we also offer a discount for returning alums who want to come back to boot camp. And of course, we've had great success with our boot camp students passing the bar. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. So I encourage you to check out the boot camp. It's here in Celebration, Florida, uh, which is a lovely little town right outside the Disney World main gates. Lots of people bring their families, send the families off to uh, visit the mouse uh, while they work for uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday preparing for the bar. So check that out. Um, I got this question the other day from a uh, California first year student who said, I've added the photo reading system to my uh, first year law student exam study program and was wondering if I should start and complete the photo reading system before I begin my bar review. As I said earlier, we think you can do the two of them uh, simultaneously and concurrently. I'm always excited when a California first year student wants to use photo reading because I know they're gonna be able to employ it in their law school studies and it's a huge benefit. And I hear all the time from students who are photo readers who say, man, I wish I'd known about this when I was in law school. So if you're in law school and you're listening to today's episode, don't hesitate to, to check that out. It's a great tool to use uh, while you are in school. Another question I get of uh, sometimes uh, a little more detailed, uh, people ask, is there such a thing as too much time to incubate after photo reading? What they mean is that after you photo read, we want you to just let the material uh, percolate in your brain. We want you to let it incubate uh, before you actually start to use it. Um, and they wanted to know how much time. And the answer is about 20 minutes at minimum, uh, up to 24 to 48 hours is plenty of time. Uh, and but here's the weird part. You can uh, photo read something and weeks, days, months, years later, it'll pop up when you need it. Why? Because the brain is so amazing. Uh, our genius mind jumps in and it gives us all the information that we need. Well, another question that we get about photo reading, uh, people find out about it and they say, well, I want to know more about that. Um, who should I talk with to learn more? Uh, the best answer is to check out these podcasts or to go to our website at celebrationbarreview.com. There's a section under order and special uh, products, and you can find uh, information about photo reading there. You can also check our podcast uh, webpage and just type in photo reading and you'll see we've done a lot of episodes. We'll link to some of the more popular ones uh, here uh, to check out more information about photo reading. And finally, uh, if you're watching or listening our podcast, uh, there is a link to schedule a free uh, consultation with me. I'd be glad to talk with you about your studies and about photo reading um, and tell you more about it. I think it's a, a really powerful tool, obviously. Question that uh, we got a lot is, are there written materials or books for the photo reading course? And the answer is no, it's all digital. So you can get it right away, start studying right away uh, and begin to work with it. Now, related to that is a question about whether or not you have to use uh, printed books when you're photo reading. And the answer is absolutely not. You can photo read digitally. That's the way I photo read right off my laptop or my device, my iPad. Uh, but you can also photo read hard copy books. So whatever works for you, whatever's best for you or more convenient for you, the system works exactly the same way, but you don't need any hard copy books. And there are not any in the uh, learning strategies course, and we don't provide hard copy books unless you come to boot camp, and then we give you some photo reading books that are in hard copy uh, just to have a resource to take home with you. All right. Um, one of the questions we get from people that are a little further into the process of photo reading is they say, uh, the question is something like this. We recommend that you not go on to mind maps right away after photo reading, uh, but to close your eyes, get a feeling for the material, um, and then come back to the mind maps later. Um, is that an accurate understanding? And the answer is generally yes. What we want you to do in photo reading is to photo read the materials, and then take a little bit of time, let it incubate, and then start to create your mind maps. And the way that we do that typically is that we have you create uh, several nested mind maps, starting with the table of contents, and then working down into smaller and smaller segments from that table of contents, and then ultimately more detailed mind maps in a subject based on the details of the questions themselves. So you create, in effect, a series of nested mind maps. Now, it's easier to do that on a computer, I think, than in paper, but either way, it's just a matter of wrapping the, the paper around the other pages and making the booklet, if you will. Um, but the idea here is to give yourself a little bit of time. Along with that, 
Uh, you also will have lectures in our course, and you can mind map as you're lecturing and or as, as you're listening to the lecture or watching it. And you'll also have practice questions, which again activate the material. Now, we offer an enhanced syllabus for our photo readers that literally shows you when to photo read, when to mind map, and how to put all that together. So you don't even have to think about it. It's photo read, then you mind map, then you listen to a lecture, then you photo read again, and so on and so forth. So we lay it all out for you, and I think that makes it a whole lot easier. Um, and so if you've got any questions about that, uh, I think this, this uh, eliminates that particular problem. Okay. Question that I got, this was an interesting one. Someone said, a year ago or so, my wife purchased the photo reading program from Learning Strategies for our oldest daughter. And I recently did the program and now I'm starting to photo read. But I'm not sure how I can implement this skill for my bar studies. Particularly my concern pertains to time allocation. Do I have to adjust my syllabus to add the amount of study time saved by having to photo read the outlines to the time allocated for practice, like uh, essay writing? I want to make sure that I stay uh, within the time that's available to me. It's a great question. The answer is that you actually save time when you photo read, not just because you're saving the time in the reading itself, but because you're much more efficient in the mind mapping process. So typically, a non-photo reader will need about uh, 10 hours to complete one subject uh, outline for the MBE, for example. And then they'll have essays and lectures and practice MBE questions to do. Well, as a photo reader, you're going to cut out that first time 10 hours and reduce it down to about 15 to 30 minutes. Then you can use some portion of that time to mind map. Then as you're listening to the lecture, you can mind map again. And as you're doing practice questions, you mind map again. And the net effect is that you'll find yourself still at about 250 hours or less uh, in your studies. So it is a very effective way uh, to cut your studies down. If you're in a big box bar review and you're spending 500 or more hours in studying, photo reading can be the lifesaver uh, that changes you there. Okay. Um, so, uh, and then uh, again, one of the questions I, I get, uh, someone uh, saw our videos on YouTube and there's plenty on YouTube. And of course you can always go there and type in photo reading for the bar exam and you'll see a bunch of uh, videos I've done. Uh, but they said, uh, I'm aware that you have your own photo reading for the bar exam course. Is it different than the one from learning strategies? And as I've said earlier, it's quite different. It builds on the learning strategies. We worked with them, but we enhanced it to make it more effective with the syllabus, with the study guide, with the additional materials, with the focus on essay writing and taking MBE questions and using our uh, trademarked concept of selective intuition to answer the MBE. This is literally how you use photo reading then in answering multiple choice questions. That's something you won't find in uh, the Learning Strategies course. Again, it's really designed as the core course and then we've enhanced it with the other things that we're doing. Now, for those of you that are trying to figure out what all this really means, if you're still with me, let me just share with you what a student wrote to me about what they were doing to photo read because I think it's a pretty good outline of the general process. Uh, they said, I'm currently studying in the following manner. I photo read each morning all of the subjects, and it takes me 30 minutes to do all of them. Then I create a broad mind map for each subject, and then I create mind maps for subtopics. Then I listen to the lecture to activate what I've just photo read, and then I do practice questions, MBE or essays, and then I add to the mind map the holding principle uh, for the designated question if it's not already on my mind map. I'm currently studying about five hours a day. Um, does that work? And the answer is yes, that's exactly what you need to be doing. And that's what a good five hours worth of study would be. Uh, now, the only thing that's different is this particular student is photo reading everything. You could just photo read the one assignment. It would take you about five minutes to do that. Uh, but you can do the entire MBE in 30 minutes. And uh, that kind of blows people's minds when they think about it, but that is absolutely possible. And I guess ultimately the question is, does it work? So another student sent me an email and said, uh, I, I did your test, your photo reading skills test, which I get, send out to our students after they've been in the photo reading for the bar exam course for a while. And following the instructions, my scores are as follow. I did 10 questions cold and I got three out of 10 correct. Then I photo read and I got 10 correct. Then I photo read and mind mapped and I got 10 more correct. Um, what, what happened? How did that work? Well, that's what photo reading does. Will you get all of the questions correct? No, most people most of the time won't. But you'll get a whole lot more correct than when you just read traditionally and you try to answer questions. And so that's the difference that we see over and over again. And uh, 
again, I would encourage you to check out the interviews we've done with past students. You will hear them talk on their own time and time again about what they did with photo reading and why it changed their numbers. And it's really uh, pretty amazing. Um, so those are some of the questions that we get from people. I hope that that gives you uh, a sense of uh, what things uh, are available and possible. I want to encourage you, if you're thinking about photo reading, to contact me, set up an appointment. I'd be glad to talk with you about it. Check out our YouTube videos, check out our podcasts, uh, check out our order page. There's lots of information there. Photo reading is not new to us at Celebration Bar Review. We've been doing it for over a decade now, and we've had many, many students go through the course. As I say, we now have about three quarters of our current enrollment uh, taking photo reading. So uh, that's not because we have pushed photo reading, it's because they've realized that it works, they've heard from other people that it works, and they contact us uh, to jump in. I really encourage you to check it out. I think it can make a huge difference in your studies. I think it's a tool that's well worth uh, your exploration, and uh, I invite you to, to learn more about it. And of course, if we didn't cover your specific question when it came to photo reading, don't hesitate to reach out to us and let us know. We'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. So good luck with your bar studies. Hope you incorporate photo reading, mind maps, paraliminals. I think all of those tools can make such a huge difference in your studies and can help you pass your bar exam. Well, that's our episode for today. I hope you found it helpful. I uh, hope that we uh, piqued your interest about photo reading. If you're not a photo reader, if you are a photo reader, I hope we gave you some additional information that you can use uh, to be more successful with your studies. I wanna just wrap up by reminding you once again, we've got the free training webinar coming. Uh, you can register for it and then watch on demand. The title is Do Something Different, Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. You can register here on the uh, podcast show notes page or by going to celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar. Hope everybody has a good study week. If you're getting ready for the February exam, we're now in about the uh, 40 to 50 day window. And uh, obviously that's the time when the exam starts to get very real. So next week we'll be back with more information to help you get ready for the upcoming test. And of course, if you're taking the exam in July, 2020 or beyond, uh, we're really glad to have you with us as well. We'll try and provide lots of information that you can find useful as well. So thanks everybody, have a great study week and we'll see you next week along the Extra Mile. Thanks for listening to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers at www.celebrationbarreview.com. <laughs>